Hi, I'm Greg Dell with Attorneys Dell and Schaefer, and today I'm here with Attorney Rachel Alters, and we are going to discuss Mutual of Omaha and specifically disability insurance claims with Mutual of Omaha. Um, We've been handling a lot of cases for many years against Mutual of Omaha. They're a very large insurance company. Um, they actually started in 1909, so they have a very long, extensive history of offering insurance products. And more specifically, they primarily offer group short-term and long-term disability insurance right. products. So in this video, I want to kind of talk in an overview about the applying process for them, the appeal process, and then lawsuits, all three of those categories which we've helped people with. Also, I know we've done several lump sum buyouts with them of right. policies that they have, not something that's a guaranteed thing, but it's also an option as well. So let's get into right away in terms of having, what's your view of Mutual of Omaha in terms of as a disability insurance company? Um, I've had some pretty good experiences with Mutual of Omaha. I mean, they're not going to approve every claim, as most insurance companies don't, but they're pretty easy to work with. You know, they are pretty fair. They do um, approve a lot of claims, but we do also do a lot of appeals and have to fight the claims. And, you know, but in general, overall, they're a pretty good company. All right, so it's not one of the companies where you're going, oh, shit, it's them. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. When you, um, what's unique about a Mutual of Omaha policy in terms of the definition of disability that you frequently see? I know they offer many different versions, yes. but what do you commonly see as the definition of disability in one of their policies? Well, in most policies in general, the definition of total disability usually is that you're unable to do the material substantial duties of your occupation, and usually it's all of the material substantial, substantial duties. In a Mutual of Omaha policy, at least that I, the last few that I've worked on, it's can you do um, are you unable to do one of the material, at least one of the material substantial duties of your job? And it also usually goes on to say that, you know, and you also have a 99% loss of income. So basically, you're unable to earn at least 99% right, of your income. Okay. So, sorry, unable to learn, earn at least 99%. So that would be a 1% right. loss of 1 income. 1% loss of income. And then if you have both of those, then you can qualify for disability. Okay, so if the definition is unable to perform one or more of the duties of your occupation, does that mean if someone can't do one of the duties of their occupation, then they could qualify for disability? Right. Okay, so that seems to be a very favorable definition as compared to one in which it's unable to do the duties of your occupation or the substantial material duties of your occupation because very often we get claim denials where they say, well, you could still do 50% of what you used to do and right. the fact that you can't do the other 50% doesn't mean that you're disabled. Correct. Okay. What about, do they offer something um, that we know as residual or partial disability that you've seen? Yes, they also offer, a, basically, if you're not able to do one of the duties of your occupation and you do have a loss of income, then you know, you're know you still able to work. They do offer, they will pay you, um, obviously they probably will reduce the, the monthly benefit amount depending on how much money you're earning. Um, but yes, they do offer a residual. Right, so the policy will have a formula that has to be used in order to calculate the partial disability if you're still working. Correct. Okay. Um, what about their definition of, of own occupation? Do they really, is it a true own occupation or is it not a true own occupation in the sense of that they're going to look at the specific duties of what that person was doing? Right. Well, most people assume, because not everyone reads their policies, they assume that, hey, I can't do my own job as it's performed in my office every day. And they said, okay, so since I can't do that, I should qualify for disability benefits. But under most of these group policies, including Mutual of Omaha's policy, they look at your own occupation as it's defined in the national economy. So they'll look at the Dictionary of Occupational Titles or something called ONET, which will define what your job title and what your duties are. And um, if you, they, you know, if they look at those occupational duties and decide that, hey, you can't do your job, then yes, you qualify. But if your job specifically requires you to travel, let's say, in your, you know, your specific employer says, hey, you got to travel three times a week, but the Dictionary of Occupational Titles doesn't include that as a job duty, then they won't include that under your definition of disability under the own occupation definition. So that's where it gets a little tricky. So that's yeah. kind of sad because somebody says, hey, these are all the things I do in my job, and mm -hmm. then we look up what the DOT Dictionary of Occupational Titles definition is for the right. job, and it doesn't say anything about that. And mm -hmm. the reality is, unfortunately, you have to go by what the policy says for that. Right. 
Now, I know also the Mutual of Omaha has a change of definition disability usually after 24 months, Correct. meaning it doesn't stay own occupation. What is the change of definition disability like? Um, usually under most policies, after 24 months of being disabled under your own occupation, it changes to whether you can do any gainful occupation that you're reasonably educated to do. So usually that means a sedentary job, sitting at a desk 40 hours a week, and some of them have an income component, so it will also add, you know, can you earn up to 85% of your disability income or 60%, or it depends on the policy, but they will look at the income component as well. Um, but it does become more difficult to, to qualify under that definition of disability. So it's not as good as an own occupation, but it is good that they have an income component because some right. of these policies just say any gainful occupation and theoretically that could be like going to work at McDonald's. Correct. So that's not something we have in this case. No, not usually, no. Okay. Um, let's touch on the appeals. Now these are governed by ERISA, which means that a claimant, if they get denied, well, most of them are governed by most. ERISA, right. which means that you have to file an appeal before you can file a lawsuit. Do they usually require one appeal or two appeals? Mutual of Omaha only requires one appeal before you can take them to court, which is much better than some, some or at least one of the other insurance carriers I have in mind um, that requires two. So you have one appeal process. They give you 180 days to file the appeal. They usually take around nine, 45 to 90 days to make a determination. And if they don't overturn their decision, then you can take them to federal court. Okay. Do you yeah. find in their appeal process that they use outside doctors, internal doctors, third-party companies? What's been your experience about their technique of review on appeal? It sometimes depends on the, I would say, the, the amount of the benefit at stake. Sometimes when the benefit amount is lower, they'll use their internal peer review doctors because it costs them less money. Um, oftentimes when there's a, a, value, a benefit that's a little bit higher, like I represent a physician on a case and they've sent him for an independent medical evaluation to determine whether or not you know, that doctor believes that he's actually disabled. So I think it depends, but oftentimes they go, their go-to is the peer review because that's the simplest, easiest, and they're usually in-house. Right, and most yeah. of the courts around the country have allowed these disability insurance companies to just right. rely on um, an internal peer review as a reasonable basis for reviewing the claim. So a lot of factors that we always get into with that as to whether or not that is reasonable. Should they have used the appropriate medical specialist? Should they have gone to an outside doctor to review the claim? Should they have done some kind of independent medical exam? Okay. So there's so many different factors and of course we do other videos about different steps to take in, a, in an appeal where we'll go through all of those things. Um, for someone has an appeal, we always tell them that is all we need to review is a copy of your denial letter as well as a copy of your policy so that we can see if the company, obviously what their basis was for denying your claim and also what are we dealing with, what do we have to prove in terms of your policy. Let's shift to the, the lawsuit. Sure. Now, I know you've, we've had many lawsuits um, nationwide against Mutual of Omaha. There's a lot of cases out there of lawsuits that have been filed against. Mutual of Omaha, how has your experience been in litigation against them? Um, well, my experience is I have had a lot of lawsuits with Mutual of Omaha, and you know the, the good news with Mutual of Omaha is they are a carrier that um, is willing to settle before actually going to court and letting a judge decide because there are a lot of limitations when you file an ERISA lawsuit, and the scales are usually tipped in favor of, of the insurance carrier just by the way the law is written. So I have a lot of luck with them settling the cases for you know a reasonable amount. Obviously, it's not going to be all that the claimant expects, and it's you know not going to be probably more than the carrier wants to pay. But I do have a good a good relationship with their attorneys, and I am able to settle the cases with them successfully. So you yeah. you find them some companies just aren't reasonable, but you find they're recognizing that there's risk to them as well as the risk to to the potential claimant who's right. bringing the lawsuit. Yes. Um, do these policies usually contain discretionary clauses and what's the limitation of, of that when you're litigating these lawsuits against, mass, against sorry, Mutual of Omaha? Yeah. Um, yes, they usually do and the limitation with the discretionary clause is that the, um, you know, the standard of review will be arbitrary and capricious most likely unless you know, there's a couple ways you can get around that but that depends on whether Mutual of Omaha drops the ball during the appeal process but if that doesn't happen then yes, they, you know, the judge will review it under an arbitrary and capricious 
review, which basically means that there's not one reasonable basis to deny the that there has to be a reasonable basis to deny the claim. If they don't find that they had one reasonable basis to deny the claim, um, then we would win, but it's very hard to get around. Okay. Yeah. So in, again, similarly, if you've been denied and you've exhausted all of your appeals, then the next step for us to determine if we can help you is to review your final denial letter, um, and then we can make a determination if it's something that we think we can help you with. We have to act very quickly once your claim has been denied because we're always worried about the statute of limitations. And the statute of limitations is the period of time which you have to bring a lawsuit, um, which can sometimes is not clear. Um, it can be from the date they first denied your claim. It can be from the date of disability. It could be from when they made a, a final decision. There's lots of different arguments with that. And if you've recently been denied and your claims you know, within a year or so, you don't have anything to worry about. But if this has been going on for a period of time, then there's some real concern and we need to evaluate that claim um, right away. So with any claim that you have with Mutual of Omaha, we always offer a free initial consultation. We help claimants all over the country. When you call us, we're gonna provide you with an immediate free consultation. You're gonna speak with an attorney right away and we're gonna let you know immediately if we think that we can help you. Thank you for considering our firm.